Thank you for joining us. My name is Pamina Swainaina. I'm the managing partner here at uh, Corporate Staffing Services. Corporate Staffing Services is a HR consultancy firm which is registered by the Institute of Human Resource Management, the body that governs the HR profession. So we all know what is happening the world over and the topic of the day is all about coronavirus and how it's affecting the workplace. Now many employers and even professionals have come to us asking us about the implication of this uh, in the workplace. So today I'm here to share with you some of the tips uh, which are legal and others which are HR because some of the it's a trying time for the businesses. A lot of the employers are concerned on how life will be going forward. Employer, employees and professionals are also concerned about job losses, job cuts. And I would say we are in a catch-22 situation. So I just want to provide you with my opinion uh, based on some of the questions that uh, you've been raising. So the first issue I wanted us to look at is the issue of OSHA, which is uh, an abbreviation for Occupational Safety and Health Act. And OSHA, what basically OSHA stipulates is that you as an employer, you are supposed to provide a safe and secure working for your uh, employees. In the Employment Act and OSHA, your workplace is designated for WIBA. So you will find now that the president has, requ has requested that employers give a chance to employees to work remotely, uh, we need to find out from the insurance company whether even homes would be considered as workplace. Because it's possible someone could be working from home, then they are injured. Does, does your insurance uh, company cover that? So I think as HR professionals, as management, it's for you to take the next step, um, engage your insurance provider to find out whether they are going to cover you when your employees are working at home. Find a clarification uh, before things, uh, if, before you, 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 you encounter such an issue. The other issue I wanted us to, I wanted to address is on the issue of sick leave. Now the Employment Act stipulates that uh, an employee is entitled to 14 days of sick leave. And these 14 days are divided into two. So you have uh, an employee who falls sick, they'll be, for the first seven days, they'll be on full pay. Then the next seven days, they'll be on half pay. And sick leave is only um, applicable for staff who've worked for two months and above. So if you have someone who joined in the month of February and they fall sick in March, then they may not be um, eligible for, for sick leave. However, the Regulation of Wages Act provides for 30 days full pay and 15 days on half pay. So you'll find a lot of employers you go with the regulation of wages as opposed to the Employment Act. And I think these are some of the things in the future that needs to be harmonized because you have two pieces of registration which are um, stipulating different things. The sick leave, we talk about the seven days on full pay and seven days half pay. And then the regulation of wages, you talk about 30 days uh, on full pay and 15 days of half, of half pay. So for me, my advice to employers is always whatever uh, is of benefit to the employee, who's, to the employees, which is the regulation of wages that stipulates for one month and then 15 days on half pay. For me, that's what I would advise that you apply uh, in this situation. What about if someone has um, a staff, then they are okay, but they have a sick relative. What happens? Or even a family member. What happens in this case? Unfortunately, the law does not provide for that. So I would say this is where compassion on a humanitarian grounds, if, they are, if the staff is to take some care of someone back at home, I think uh, this is where then compassion leave would come in. But then it would have to be a discussion between you and the said employee. Here are two issues. There's the issue of the annual leave and unpaid leave. Now allow me to give you some backgrounds uh, when it comes to leave. So leave, according to the Employment Act, we only have the annual leave, which the law stipulates a minimum of 21 days. Then we have the sick leave, then we have the paternity, and the maternity leave. So the law does not recognize unpaid leave. There's nothing like unpaid leave when it comes to, to the Employment Act. 
Also, as employers, you need to be aware that you cannot force someone to go on leave. Employees are supposed to take to go on leave, even the annual leave, upon request. Uh, you can discuss with the employees and they can be able to go for uh, the paid leave. What about the unpaid leave? So as I've said, the, issue, the law does not provide uh, for unpaid leave. The law is silent. However, you need to be very careful when it comes to the employment. Anything that is detriment to an employee will be considered unlawful. So remember, unpaid leave basically means these employees is going home without a salary. So if you look at the Employment Act, if you go to their contract, they would say, my expectation is when I'm working for this company, I'm supposed to be paid this much. Even when I go for the annual leave, it's still paid leave. So if you ask, if you are to ask them to go for unpaid leave, uh, please note that this is against the law. However, if the employee requests for the unpaid leave, then the employer can grant that unpaid leave. So how does this apply in the situation that we are in for? I believe if in consultation the employee and the employer agree, then there can be room for unpaid leave. So you have to be very careful here. You must consult your employees. You must engage them. It's not just an issue of saying there's no business. So all of you, you need to go for leave. No. You have to sit. You have to agree. Consult have a discussion, and then, if you're in agreement, then the staff can take unpaid leave. The other issue was the issue of the pay cuts. So, business have been hard hit, and the reality is a lot of businesses will not be able to afford the payroll going forth. Especially the SMEs who account for the, um, who are the biggest employers in the country. That's the reality. So, how do you handle the issue of pay cuts? So, I know some of you are you know, are asking this from a point of concern, from a point of business continuity, how do you handle this? So again, remember, when you're hiring this person, the employment contract, there were certain expectations. So if you're paying this staff 50,000, 100,000, that's what they would be expecting to get. So if anything that is detriment to the company, to, to the employee themselves, it's against the law. So at face value, you can also not just uh, deduct an employee's salary. You cannot reduce their salary. So what happens then? I believe also upon consultation there's room to implement this. So if you're looking, if you have in mind um, if the continuity of the business is only assured, if you implement some cost-cutting measures, then it's important for you to sit with your staff and agree on how to go about this. And if it means cutting on the salaries, maybe that would be a, a good option for, for both parties. Then some of you ask me, so if we cut salaries, what happens? Let's say someone was earning 100,000 and I tell them in the next three months they'll be earning 50,000. Um, does that mean I have uh, every time, so th does that mean I, have, I owe them money when business resumes? No, unfortunately not. So the courts have pronounced themselves and... Uh, so if you allow, if you agree to a salary cut for three months, you can't come back on the fourth month and say, no, you're supposed to be paying me 100000 every month. You only paid me 50000 each, so you owe me 150000 as a balance. No. So as an, employee, that's an, uh, as an employee and an employer, that's something you need to have in mind. So if all, this do if all this doesn't work, then we have the issue of redundancy that a lot of you have been asking. So I'll start by defining what redundancy is. So a simple definition of redundancy is where an employee loses a job, not because of their fault. So let's say you come, you implement new technology, you come, you relocate office, you come, uh, the, the company is not able to be operational because of this pandemic. There are various reasons. So, so long as it's not the employees doing, you know, it's not a performance issue, it's not sick, it's, it's not that the staff is sick, it's not that the, um, there's a gross misconduct issue. So anything else, if it's not the fault of the employee, then redundancy comes into play. So what are you supposed to do when it comes to redundancy? So there's a due process, okay? And I'll divide it into three, three part process. 
So the first one is to issue the, the staff with the letter of intention to carry out a redundancy. And please note that when it comes to redundancy, we do not make individuals redundant. We make positions redundant. So that's one thing I need to advise employers. So step number one, letter of intention uh, of, in of redundancy. So after that, you go into a 30-day period where you enter into negotiation with the said employee. So let's say, for example, in this situation, you're not able to meet your, um, your operational costs because of what is happening the world over because of this pandemic. Then this is where you can agree and say, okay, uh, we can only afford 10% of our payroll. And then you table the facts on the table. And if the staff are willing to go with this, then uh, you've come to a solution. If not, then this is where you can agree to part. After the expiry of those 30 days, then you need to notify the, the RIBA office, and the RIBA office are the ones to give you the go-ahead. So when the RIBA office gives you the go-ahead, then uh, you can terminate the staff as per the contract. So you need to be careful uh, at the start when you're doing the letter of intention to carry out the redundancy. If there's a union, you need to involve them from the word go. So that's the procedure. So it's not just a matter of calling the staff and letting them know that now you're declaring their position redundant. No. For me, I believe the minimum the process should take is two months. One month to allow for consultation and then one month for for notice of termination or depending on what the contract stipulates. So if the contract stipulates two months, three months to terminate a contract, you must follow that. And uh, what are the benefits applicable? So for every, when you declare a staff redundant, for every year of service, you need to pay them uh, equivalent of 15 days. That's the minimum. There are companies who's, in whose uh, HR policy they've indicated 30 days, 20 days. So there is low stipulates a minimum of 15 days. So you need to pay that, you need to pay any accrued leave days, anything owing to staff, uh, you, need, you need to pay them before um, you, you, you can say that now that, that's final. So the other thing I wanted to emphasize is on, even when you're consulting with your employees, uh, please make sure there are proper documentation. So whether it's be emails, memos, uh, make sure if it's them, uh, meetings they're minuted. Because a lot of issues um, that employers complain about that the labor codes favor the employees. No, what happens is that you'll find that either the employer has not gone through the due process or if they've had, there's no proper documentation. So I would advise employers, even during these uh, trying times, anything that you're doing with your staff, any engagement that you're doing, it shouldn't be just by word of mouth or just having, uh, you know, one meeting and you ask someone to sign somewhere. No. Um, you need, if it ever comes to that point, the courts will be very much interested to see what process did you take your staff through. So I would highly encourage you, uh, go, go with minutes where everyone signs their pens, their signatures, and they say this is what we discuss, and this, this, this is what uh, was the outcome of the meeting. So I must insist on this, consult, consult at every opportunity and also make sure even when you're consulting, there's proper documentation to that effect. And uh, you can still comment and if, if you still have a question, I can be able to address them. The other issue I wanted to raise is now the HR aspect. We've looked at the, at the legal aspect. Now, the reality is going forth, um, businesses are really struggling, especially the SMEs. Like I say, these are the majority of the employers out there. And I, in my opinion, I don't see SMEs being able to survive one or two months, you know, without income. Pro HR managers, fellow employers, is take care of your staff. I mean, these are people who've been with you for years. These are people who've gone out to, to do their very best, you know, to make the company succeed. So before you go and terminate them, you know, before you go and do the pay cuts, it's very important for you to engage them, to consult them, you know, to sit um, at the table and have a frank discussion on the future of the company and what role each party is going to play. If you're going to take action, any action, whether it's the unpaid leave, whether it's the pay cuts, whether it's redundancy, consultation is a must. Since the 2010, the new constitution, this, it's become a way of life. 
So think, engage your employees, consult, consult, consult. And you don't want a situation where after this is over, uh, someone feels, no, my employer did not take care of my needs when I needed them. Or on the other side, you have an employer saying, I did my very best for the employees, but they disappointed me. I don't think it should reach at that level. I think if both parties sit and discuss and look at the best option, uh, the, uh, the best option out of there, I believe we can be able to overcome this. It's going to be a challenging time, but for both parties, I believe there's a way we can overcome this. So thank you very much. If you have questions, um, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be able to address them. Stay safe, stay healthy.